In this session, we have the panel discussion, Vehicle Telematics, Safety and Security. I would like to invite on stage Mr. Manish Prasad, CEO and editor, Telematics Wire, who will be moderating this session. Mr. Manish. Now I request the panelists to come on stage. Dr. Ravindra S. Minhas, he is Deputy Chief General Manager, Public Relations, Delhi Transport Corporation. Mr. Minhas. Ms. Sakshi Vich, Founder and CEO, Miles, Cars on Rent India. Ms. Sakshi. Dr. Kamal Soi, he is member at National Road Safety Council, MORTH. Dr. Soi. Mr. Kushwant Pawar, he is Key Account Manager, ITAS Automotive. Mr. Kushwant. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Abhinav. Uh, in this session, which we are a panel discussion on vehicle telematics, safety, and security. Interesting session, important session, important from both government point of view. Government has been laying a lot of stress on the safety part. There has been discussion amongst the industry on the cyber security part. Uh, recently, a couple of months back, we had a very extensive discussion on the uh, implications of cybersecurity uh, in the automotive segment. Uh, coming to the safety part, I think it's important uh, both for the passenger, for the goods, for the business. And uh, herein, we have some very, uh, like I'll say, it covers a diverse background where we have uh, uh, Dr. Minhas, uh, from the DTC, who will be sharing his views on uh, passenger safety and uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, we have Ms. Sakshi Viz, uh, founder CEO of Miles. Uh, like uh, I was having a chat before this and uh, was very excited to hear like the kind of uh, like the, the the not just uh, like they are talking about rent a car and uh, the technologies interventions which they are introducing, and the way they are looking at telematics. And uh, it will be interesting to see how telematics is actually uh, providing benefits and what more can we look forward to. And uh, we have from ETAS, uh, who are actually into the security part, if I am uh, correct. Uh, and uh, so I think that will cover that particular element, the security part. Uh, very important part considering we are the, the, the connected vehicle or the connectivity is around the corner. Already we are seeing some kind of connectivity through our infotainment panel or our mobile phone connected with the vehicle to the outside world. And uh, already like there are ministries and departments talking about embedded SIM. So I think that two aspect like we'll be able to cover with your views. To begin with, uh, I'd like to invite Dr. Uh, Minhas uh, to share his thoughts. I, I, like he is having a presentation, sir. Uh, so uh, Dr. Minhas will be sharing his views through a presentation. So. From everybody, uh, I think this is uh, just after lunch. Everybody must be having some load on their brains. So I'll try to uh, say uh, with minimum time to give maximum information so that you should, people should not feel bored. So uh, basically, uh, DTC is known to everybody who is in Delhi. In one way or other, he must have used Delhi because it has been a uh, lifeline of Delhi uh, before the introduction of uh, Metro Rail. This was the sole public transport mode uh, before that. So DTC, before 1948, uh, this was a private company owned by uh, Maharaja Sindhya. In 48, it was nationalized as Delhi Transport Services. Then uh, in 50s, uh, again, it was renamed as uh, Delhi Transport Undertaking under NCD. 
in 1971 under this uh, Road Transport Corporation Act. This corporation was made and it was named as Delhi Transport Corporation. And in, uh, it was under central government. In 1996, when uh, Delhi government was formed, uh, this was transferred to Delhi government. So now this DTC is working under the control of GNCTD. So basically, uh, we, uh, we are operating in the city of Delhi and its adjoining areas. We operate under four regions, east, west, north, south, and the total depots are 39, out of which 34 depots are of low floor buses and few depots we have of uh, standard buses which are on the brim of extension because we, we will operate, in future we will operate uh, these uh, low floor buses only. We operate on about 555 routes, 11 routes in NCR, uh, the nearby cities like Panipat, uh, uh, this uh, Meret, uh, Gurgaon, Ghaziabad. Uh, our daily traffic earning is about 2.5 crores. Uh, we operate daily about uh, 40,000 trips and about 8 lakhs of kilometer in Delhi. So our earning per kilometer is about, uh, earning per kilometer is 36 rupees. Uh, this is a general diagram uh, of, uh, we see the information which is being shared by, through control room servers to the public, to the buses and uh, through apps to the public, what information we have to give. In organizational needs, there, are there is a list of uh, items which, which requires IT intervention and uh, safety and security of passengers is one of them. Uh, basically, the status in DTC, we, we have, as a pilot in uh, 2014, we have put CCTV cameras in about 200, uh, 200 buses. This was after the out uh, this incidence of Nirbhaya, which was the rarest of the rare, rare which happened in Delhi itself in a private bus. So after that, government become very much active, proactive, so that the safety and security of passengers, especially women uh, passengers, should be taken care of. So as a uh, pilot, we have taken uh, in 200 buses, which are since uh, November 2014 till date. We have, we have uh, CCTV cameras in 200 bu uh, buses, 100 of Rajghat depot and 100 of Srojinagar depots. They are running very well till date, and large number of cases have been resolved through them. Then uh, we have, uh, implemented this ETMs, electronic ticketing machines, which are working in all the bus, all the 4,000 buses of the corporation. And uh, uh, there is a good news for Deliates that after this election, it is likely that you will be able to use your common card in DTC as well as Metro both. You need not to purchase a ticket in a DTC bus if you have a Metro card. Then uh, we have uh, we have GPS. We have a project of GPS in our buses. But uh, due to some differences in, in the, with the vendor, uh, in very few buses those uh, GPS systems are running and we are going for, uh, our transport department is going for a new uh, this, uh, tender for GPS. And after GPS, only we will be able to give uh, this uh, passenger information system in a better way. On, ex on experimental basis, we have uh, put Wi-Fi services also in some of our buses, in about six buses. Uh, private players have given free of cost uh, uh, this uh, Wi-Fi services. People can, uh, say, uh, activate their mobiles or their laptops in the buses, and they can use the Wi-Fi free services. So other services of IT uh, the uh, impacts are this. We are using biometric attendance 100%. Nowhere manual attendance is being marked. We have human resource management. All transfers are very transparent. These are being done through, uh, say, these uh, uh, our uh, softwares only. Then all total payroll, earlier it was outsourced, now it is being done by our IT department itself. Basically, the, uh, uh, this telematics is, of using, uh, is for better monitoring and enhance efficiency of the transport corporation, including its infrastructure. Second is security and safety of commuters, the passengers who are traveling in the buses. And lastly, it facilitates traveling commuters also. Monitoring, we can monitor all the performance sitting at the control room. We can, uh, perf uh, we can find, uh, see the uh, route performance. We can see the, the number of duties on that route. Uh, we can compare the performance, which is the best one, which is the least one. Then we can monitor the uh, this efficiency of the crew, the drivers and conductors, what they are doing, how they are doing, how much they are doing, that we can also monitor. Then the efficiency of depots, efficiency of the region, then overall performance of the corporation, we can uh, say find out. Like this, this telematics uh, applications are of very much use 
for corporation itself. Then for security of commuters, we have CCTV cameras and GPS system. CCTV cameras facilitate surveillance of area inside and to some extent outside of buses. In case of ac accident with a bus or with other this vehicle, the camera records the outside view also. So it, these are of very help uh, in analyzing the cause of the accident. Even Delhi police have asked for these uh, footages from our cameras for analyzing the accidents or uh, other things. Can help identify miscreants and criminals inside the buses. Now with the use of low floor buses, the closed door operation is there. If somebody will do any mischief in the bus, he cannot escape until unless the driver opens the door. So that is also one of the ben benefit. And the uh, whenever somebody uh, knows that somebody is viewing me, he becomes much more alert. So with the in induction of these uh, CCTV camera in these 200 buses, these have given very good results. And we, it has been seen that the, say, the eve teasing and other incidents have reduced to minimal in the buses. Can help in accident analysis can help in monitoring crew habits and attentiveness on duty. Well, whenever the crew moves with high speed, we can just catch hold of them. Whenever they skip the stands, that can also be seen. So we can uh, say, uh, make better efficiency of the crew with us through telematics. Then proper parking of buses being done or not, it can also be monitored through control rooms. This is just a list may not be uh, properly visible uh, of Srojinagar depot the instances which have been solved through the footages of CCTV camera and this. There was a school students, the driver uh, has reported that the students used to stop the buses anywhere in the Dhaba or they used to drink, um, they, they drink and all do all these things. We reported to the principal that but they did nothing. But when we sent these uh, C CCTV footage to them, then they have taken those students to task and after that day, they have not created any problem on the way uh, for, with the driver and the conductor. So there are likewise, there are many instances once the driver parked the bus in the depot, he, did, he forgot to put the handbrake and bus moved at its own and struck with another bus. This footage was shown to the driver that it is due to your fault and you have to pay for this. So like this, no, uh, many things can be resolved. Accident analysis, whenever some accident takes place with other bus, whose fault is this? It is easy to say, uh, find out with the help of footages. Then uh, monitoring system with GPS is there. GPS is known for its ability to inform, uh, inform position of vehicle on which it is installed. We can find out the at, the, at a point of time at which place the uh, vehicle is. If the driver is moving from off route, from, he's going from route to some other, somewhere else, it can be easily tracked through this uh, monitoring system. Then public transport can use it, monitoring its fleet for addition to its schedule. So, schedules can be adhered to the drivers and conductors when no, they are under, uh, they are being observed. So they work properly in that. Capture mileage actually operated. See, earlier we used to have a system of just uh, from A point to B1 on estimation. The, our duty officer used to write this much mileage there. Now, with the help of this, we can find the actual manner what what mileage has been run by the bus. Then facilitating uh, these uh, customers. Usage of smart card, which is about to come, it will resolve the problem of this uh, change and all these things. And conductor will not be able to, uh, say, uh, play with the, um, uh, these uh, uh, passengers. When there is no cash transaction, he will not be able to do any uh, financial embezzlement uh, of the corporation. Then in case of crimes, a bus can be identified by GPS. And safe and secure traveling under CCTV camera. There is security and safety of passengers when uh, the CCTV is observing the people who generally used to create miscreation in the buses. Then reducing wait time of the passengers by giving proper information at right time to them so that they can accordingly plan their journey. <coughs> Providing SMS, these are apps which are which in the time to come has to come up. Then at while starting from your home, you will come to know that at what time uh, the bus has to come at your stop, then accordingly you can uh, frame your program that at what time you have to move out from your house. Not only this, our crew has large number of benefits through it. That is better communication. They can, if some problem is there on the way, they can communicate it to the control room so that they can get the uh, proper direction. 
Similarly, if uh, something else happen, odd happens, Dr. they Minas. can be guided accordingly. Sir, if you can just make it Bas, brief. Uh, in, case, uh, in case of, say, uh, traffic issues, crew can be instructed regarding, then by this we can improve the uh, driving ha habits of uh, our drivers also. So it has uh, security impact on passengers, corporation, and also the crew. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Minas. I think... Uh, the initiatives being taken at DTC, particularly with uh, kind of uh, CCTV and all, we are sure it will help reduce uh, the crime, or at least it will tend to uh, like uh, create a kind of uh, fear amongst those miscreants. But we'll come. To, I have a couple of questions. We'll come to that. Uh, going forward, uh, I'd like to request uh, Sakshi to share her thoughts on how uh, they are looking at this technology, uh, telematics. There are a lot of things under telematics, starting from track and trace to going forward to uh, uh, the other options that you have. Uh, and considering uh, there is a shift in the way we are looking at mobility. So like, if you can share your thoughts on these uh, uh, lines. Afternoon, evening, almost everyone. So, um, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, for us, when we started off as Miles, our objective was to change the way car buying happens in India. Uh, just to, you know, mention a few statistics. On an annual basis, there are about 2.6 to 2.7 million passenger cars that are being bought in India. Uh, which in itself translates to Indians making an annual commitment of anywhere between 11 to $12 billion in, uh, in car buying, which also includes the subsequent costs of car purchase and maintenance and parking and all of that. Uh, our objective was to make sure that people are able to own cars for the time for which they actually need to drive the vehicle. This was only going to be made possible if we were efficiently working on technology and on insurance, which are our two prime pillars under which Miles is developed. Um, when we started out, our objective was to make sure that we are at least able to find out the uh, location of the car, the speed of the car, the ignition, the AC, all of that. Uh, when we moved forward, what we are doing now is uh, now that we've got enough data, we have over uh, two and a half lakh members who are Miles users today. Uh, you know, we, we today have people who are actually uh, documented in our systems. And we are now able to generate driver ratings. We, we're piloting that uh, on our end. We're now able to ensure that people are able to, um, you know, going forward, pay on the basis of their driving behavior. In fact, very recently, we've launched something called a trip insurance, which is uh, eliminating the need. And that was sort of the biggest uh, issue that a lot of our customers had uh, while renting a, uh, you know, a car rental from Miles or any of the other players in the industry was that they all had to pay a security deposit each time they rented a vehicle. We've actually introduced uh, a trip insurance now, which eliminates the need of that security deposit being paid. And as you move forward, uh, we would want to make it more usage-based, which means that if you're a good driver, we'd like to incentivize you. And we will be able to create those algorithms in-house, as well as from partners like some of those I'm sure are present in the, in the audience, to be able to you know, make this experience of renting for the customer a lot more flexible, a lot more affordable, and therefore a lot more convenient and safer uh, for the same reason. We also, of course, also work with um, a large number of external parties, uh, not just on the devices that get installed in our cars, but service providers such as uh, you know roadside assistance services, because that adds to the uh, safety aspect of the customer. Uh, and we also enable a lot of access to the customer to be able to rent a car as easily as they would when they were, when they are probably, uh, you know, owning a car themselves. So we are today present at corporate parks, at housing condominiums, uh, at most of the airports in the larger cities, uh, wherein you can literally walk up to the car that that's available. And the dream really is that if I can have a miles car standing between 300 meters of each other, 
uh, that will enable people to eliminate the need of buying private vehicles and uh, which has a much long lasting impact on the overall congestion problems in the cities that we exist in today. So, yeah. uh, Thank you. If I have to ask one simple question, yes. uh, how effective or how uh, like useful has this been, like uh, the usage of uh, any telematics device? Or is it something which, is, which was optional? Like so I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. You know, when we started out, one of the biggest concerns for us was the downtime of our vehicles because the cars were meeting with so many accidents because they were obviously being given to people who are not used to driving every day. Uh, they were also being given to, uh, given to workshops uh, where they used to stay on for a longer period of time. Today, because of our internal tracking systems, we have been able to reduce that downtime of vehicles from almost about 20-25% to uh, a below 10%. And that has made a significant difference for us in terms of making the car available a lot more. Um, so that's, that's right. if that answers the question. Uh, going forward, like we have Kushwant, who is from ETAS, uh, who are, I, I, I hope I'm not wrong if I say they specialize in security side. So how are you looking, uh, like if I, if you would have to have your views on the general like development cons like uh, in the space of cyber security in the automotive segment. What do you have to say in this? So, yeah, I'm audible. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Manish. Uh, one important aspect that has uh, emerged over the period of time is the requirement from OEMs, from uh, the users of vehicles and uh, uh, the consumers, uh, the, the corporate consumers like fleet owners, all of them have one or two requirements in common. Efficiency, for example. Connectivity is enabling that. But connectivity, when we look at connectivity, it is in terms of uh, telematics devices uh, are, are predominantly uh, used. <clears throat> and uh, also a lot of them are emerging nowadays. Something that we don't see evidently is the security part in it. How we look at security is uh, a comprehensive end-to-end -end security uh, right from the device security, if, if we have to say that, to the cloud connectivity. And if there is a further level of connectivity that is from clouds to the apps and the mobile apps actually uh, pushing or receiving information from the telematics devices. Now this entire channel has too many handovers of information and that opens a lot of vulnerabilities. So that is where we think that defense in depth is the approach that needs to be taken. And, uh, and, and not, security is not a, a small piece job, one piece job. I have done encryption and we are secure. It's a big myth that security means encryption. Uh, to be very honest, encryption is uh, it's just kind of hiding of messages. But what is going inside that envelope of hidden messages, I can, I can do multiple things. I can flood the telematics unit with n number of encrypted messages, and then there will be denial of service. So there will be no, no information uh, that can be received at the cloud end to really make sense out of entire fleet standing uh, or, or in the field. So it's just one kind of attack, denial of service through flood of uh, messages. There are multiple ways uh, to create a lot of attacks and replay attacks. That's why we say that security has to be holistic, defense in depth approach, and uh, largely has to be based on standards and not proprietary uh, security solutions. Considering the level of connectivity that we have over here in India in the commercial segment or the passenger's car, commercial, I think it's a much poorer situation. Like uh, uh, a while back, uh, from Bosch, Mr. Gundurao, he told like 95% of the vehicle don't have the canvas. I think uh, like we are still far off. Passenger cars, I think they are being introduced some kind of connectivity through either panels or maybe they are talking about, I think, embedded SIMs. But it's mostly panels uh, through which you would be able to connect. So in this case, do we think we need to be scared or we should start looking at this or we can, be, we can sit relaxed for a couple of more years? 
Yes, so security had to be implemented yesterday, to be very honest. Uh, telematics devices on their own earlier were only connected, uh, like, like in the very initial days, were connected to the batteries, and, and, and that was a standalone device you don't really need to worry about, apart from the fact that in case of an attack, uh, any realized attack for that matter, uh, the information that you would want to have in near real time would not be available. That, was, that used to be the scenario. But now, uh, if you look at uh, any architectures evolving, uh, at this point in time, we know at least four or five Indian OEMs who have their telematics units sitting right across uh, other rest of the clean or, or supposed to be clean uh, CAN network. This is one pro part of the problem. Second part of the problem is those OBD dongles. We, we see a lot of them uh, displayed here also. OBD is OBD uh, has actually uh, opened up uh, a lot of engine management data, for example, RPMs and other vital parameters of the vehicle can be accessed on over OBD2 standard. And this OBD dongle precisely connects to that particular dongle uh, to that port. Now, if you look at the purpose, the port was for serviceability, right? It was for serviceability. It was for the diagnostics uh, tools which the OEM has given to the service providers to really see what are the DTCs which are appearing. But now same information can, well, and the telematics devices are going to use the same information to be sent to the cloud for bringing in more efficiency. What happens now is you are exposing your CAN network in some or the other way to the open network, uh, to the connected world, which is more dangerous situation. In my view, uh, we, we, we need to think over it. Uh, there have been realized attacks in, in the rest of the world. There are some attacks which were not really covered very well here. There are vulnerabilities, but, but we cannot sit quiet. We need okay. to act fast. Right. Thanks. Uh, uh, Dr. Minhas, uh, like you talked about the Nirbhaya, uh, like uh, case, and then there was a Nirbhaya fund, uh, which was actually to like, uh, introduce certain uh, in, like steps, including technological intervention, which would uh, increase safety of the passengers. So, can you give us some update on like what, uh, where we have moved in that context? See, the Nirvya Fund is being uh, managed by a central government uh, under the Ministry of uh, Roads and Transport. So, long back when we uh, did this uh, successful uh, camera project in our 200 buses, we have re requested them for uh, about 3.6 crores of rupees to go for this in all the buses. Anyhow, we were not successful at that time, but after uh, that fund was not utilized anywhere. Now, that money has been released and uh, our uh, this uh, transport department is, will do a tender for uh, CCTV camera in all the buses. Now that fund is being uh, started using in various departments and uh, DTC will getting uh, total funds for, uh, for uh, installing CCTV camera in the buses from that one. Sir, uh, like if, if amongst the delegates, if you have any question, like uh, we'll be very happy to have those to the panel. Uh, one small request, like if you can make the question small, brief, and uh, if you can indicate whom you'd like to answer. Yeah. Abhinav. Abhinav. The address to Sakshi, uh, you are a service industry basically doing the tourism industry and all travel industry. What are the fueling solutions you're providing to your network of your own vehicles or hired vehicles? We're using HPCL cards. <laughs> we are, we are actually using I know, HPCL. you are our customers. Yeah. I'm coming to the next thing. Yeah. How you ensure in your, uh, your vehicles hired from outside? We had experience. I, I other, the, the vehicles which you hire from the Non, non your vehicle, which vehicles are not owned by you, right. how you ensure the customer's uh, safety and uh, all those things, and the movement of the car and all those things? So a lot of that gets sorted because of the technologies that we are implementing today. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, uh, you know, the base level uh, devices, of course, allow you to track the location and speed of the vehicle. Uh, 
along with that, we are able to check the uh, clutch protection, the engine, uh, you know, damage that may be happening. We're also now working on sensors that will allow us for underbody damage uh, protection on the vehicles. So that thank you. My question is to Sakshi. Hi, I'm Nazarino. So the topic today was uh, vehicle telematic safety and security, right? So uh, from Miles' perspective, uh, what are your two priorities, your vehicle safety or the passenger safety? If your vehicle safety is one of the priorities, uh, we use a lot of telematics to detect any uh, breach in the speeding, over speeding especially I'm talking. What if there is a breach in the human, like uh, your sales executive delivers the car and he accepts a bribe and he says that uh, we are able to, you can drive at any speed. How you are going to combat that issue? Um. I think first of all, uh, the security of the customer and the security of the vehicle are not mutually exclusive to us. Uh, the security of the customer is what leads us to make sure that the car is safe as well. Uh, it is important for us that we are able to give the customer a safe vehicle because of which they will not get into any trouble. Uh, you have a specific question about an executive delivering a vehicle and allowing the customer to drive at a certain speed. That, in most cases, that will not happen because the speed of the vehicle is not tracked by the agent. It's, it's tracked by the system. And the customer is really given alerts during their driving wherein they will be able to know that now they are above a certain limit, certain speed limit, and therefore they'll be charged. So the customer then has to come back to their regular uh, speed. And then we also have a tracking system internally at the call center, at, you know, at our uh, you know, central uh, reservation and tracking center, through which we are also able to contact the customer and tell them that they need to go below a speed or uh, you know, follow various policies, which is, um, I wouldn't want to get into details, but, uh, but we, we make sure that the executive is not responsible for uh, the customer uh, misusing the vehicle in any manner. Once again to Sakshi. <laughs> uh, uh, can, you, can you throw some light on uh, the vehicle health monitoring part? You said you have reduced the downtime of your vehicles. Uh, was it, uh, were you talking about all the aspects of telematics or just the track and trace thing? Um, well, to begin with, and I'm not a, uh, I, I must confess, in this whole room, I'm probably the least technically sound person. But uh, some of the things that happened uh, during the time when we started was very limited uh, sort of acceptance of telematic devices by a lot of OEMs, the car manufacturers. And uh, that has gone through a sea change. Therefore, we are now able to extract a much larger amount of information about the vehicle and schedule uh, you know, the servicings, understand what are the running repair costs, understand, uh, you know, uh, have a much larger network of workshops that uh, you know, we can work with because they also are, uh, you know, are in tune with the devices that we are, uh, you know, uh, that we are using. Uh, and in, in all of these things, there is, a, of course, a lot of work that happens through our central tracking systems, which allows us to be able to reduce this time. Okay. Thank you. About the data uh, going into the cloud. So, usually we are not very uh, sure about when the data goes into the cloud. So, uh, we are... Since morning, we are just talking about uh, all the telematics data getting stored into the cloud. So uh, do we have any means to control this? Uh, are you referring to the security aspect of the yeah, data please. being stored in the cloud? Yes, please. Uh, Kushwan, would you like to take this up? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, there are multiple uh, strategies in terms of uh, data being stored on the cloud. And the first question to be answered is who owns the data? As a driver, when you are driving, your driver behavior modeling as Sakshi and team would want to capture and uh, store it on the cloud, uh, would, is the driver the owner of the data or the OEM in which this, uh, uh, the telematics device is doing this uh, job of collecting data and uh, pushing it to the cloud uh, is the owner of this data 
or the cloud service provider, uh, this, this question is yet unanswered. So who is the owner of the data is not really clear. At this point in time, whoever is pushing it. So for example, if Miles is uh, installing those uh, dongles, they are entitled to use that data. At this point in time, there is no guideline as such. Now how the data is being used is something that you are concerned about. Uh, did most of the clouds, uh, the, the standard cloud uh, providers, like be it Amazon or Microsoft or you know, you name, there are quite a few of them. They have tremendously strong security inbuilt. So th this is one thing that you can, uh, if, if they can be breached, then anything can be breached. So at this point in time, you, you rely on them. If you want to really go as an OEM or as a, as a service provider, if you want to host your own cloud, you still have the possibility to do it on, on this cloud. You can host your applications. You can still be quite safe and secure. Other ways, you can host your own data centers in-house, in your own premises, and manage them uh, effectively. All said and done, the, the, the loss of this data for any reason, for any breach, uh, in, in most developed countries like US, most of the countries in Europe, is, is very, uh, it has a lot of uh, strong repercussions. In India, it, is, uh, it has not happened on a, on a considerable scale. But yes, the government is thinking about uh, you know uh, tuning the uh, this uh, cyber laws, uh, IT uh, laws in such a way that this data privacy can be guaranteed or assured, and any breaches can be dealt in more stronger way. I think yeah, we could have uh, one question. Yeah. Hi, uh, Mandeep from uh, Pointer India. Uh, my question is to Kushwan. Uh, you mentioned about uh, how the uh, canvas data is exposed and uh, people can get into that data. They can connect to the bus and do some nasty things. So that's the problem. Have you come across technologies or protocols which could uh, prevent this from happening or something which we can implement on these devices so that this hacking could be made more difficult, let's say, or prevented. Yeah, so your last part of the question was something that I liked the most. Uh, can uh, hacking be made more difficult? Can you prevent it 100%? There is no guarantee. But uh, can you make it more difficult? Yes, this is precisely what you have to do. You have to stay one page ahead than the uh, hacker community. Uh, there are multiple strategies actually to secure your uh, devices. Uh, if you're looking at only the telematics device per se, uh, you obviously you'll have to first step in, encrypt most of the data, so hide the data. Uh, second is when you're transporting it to the cloud, uh, it has to be through certain protocols. There are a lot of standard protocols, uh, HTTPS uh, implementations for embedded systems like DTLS and other things. Uh, this can be leveraged. Of course, you have to be sure on which modes you have to use uh, the, the implementation, the design specification and implementation should be in such a way that it supports the, the hardware and the cloud. Next part is there are some advanced technologies which have uh, actually come up for device security. Uh, it's more from the hardware security module standard. So Bosch has actually promoted a standard called as Bosch HSM based on Evita 2 Evita medium uh, security standard. And this uh, standard will have a secure core inside the telematics device, or for that matter, any other electronic control unit, be it engine management or gateway ECUs, telematics, uh, will have a separate core for security uh, operations. You can have a secure firmware sitting on top of this particular core, and rest of the three, three or four cores will do the uh, host applications, your functionalities. So this is a fantastic strategy going forward. Most of the telematics gateways and uh, uh, body control transmission ECUs will more or less start moving towards HSM. I mean, that's what we expect, uh, unless and until something really strong emerges out of this. But at this point in time, uh, you have to rely more on end-to-end -end protection of uh, secure uh, security uh, communication channel. And that's through uh, TLS 1.2 and above are the standards. Uh, I think we we'll, uh, like we are running a little short of time. Uh, that's very unfortunate. 
uh, we would like to wrap up this session quickly, like in one minute, uh, like uh, Dr. Minhas, if you would like to share, like what are your thoughts on how this is going to shape up or, or like uh, in terms of safety of the passengers, how do you see the things? In a, in a very short, like uh, a minute's time, if you can. Uh, see, in the time to come, uh, say next five years or maximum 10 years, uh, the bus or vehicle cannot run without the applications of telematics. We have to rely on them. And with that only we can give, say, uh, uh, facilities to the passengers and efficiency to the company. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sakshi, like, uh, uh, like one thing which uh, we were talking about, uh, that was uh, you mentioned like you are getting into insurance, like UBIs. Using. using it. So if you can quickly uh, like share some thoughts like what exactly or how, what motivated you to consider this? Because this is a little off track, but still maybe for the benefit of the people over here. What, what, what motivated uh, Miles to consider uh, this segment? I think the objective is essentially to make the product a lot more affordable for the customer. Uh, a customer who is uh, reducing the overall costs of operation for me should be incentivized for reducing that cost of operation. If the car and the manner in which they use that vehicle is better than another one who bangs the car every day mm -hmm. that they rent the car, uh, the other person should pay for the extra, you know, uh, damages that they are doing. Uh, on an overall basis, usage-based insurance is gaining, gaining a lot of uh, importance the world over. A lot of rental car companies are already providing it. Um, uh, we are in India, of course, we have a very principal problem that there is no database of uh, driver driving history. There, the, while we are all issued driving licenses, there are no databases of driving history. So we've taken it upon ourselves to create that history of customers and make sure that we are able to then deliver an experience and a cost to the customer that works for them. Thank you. Kushwat, quickly, like, if you can uh, suggest in your view for cybersecurity, who should be, who will be, the, who will be owning this? Who will be responsible for any infringement of security? OEM, device manufacturer, or a, a user like Miles, like if some. So I think uh, you, you should look at the the, the damage uh, potential. For uh, if we look, if it, I I would want to talk uh, with the example of briefly, yeah, yeah, like very briefly, with the example of uh, Jeep uh, Cherokee attack, uh, 2015 July. The Jeep Shiroke was attacked, and uh, through telematics uh, component of uh, an implemented gateway, these guys uh, were able to take control of brakes and steering. And this was all done remotely through a remote, uh, like uh, wireless connectivity. So that tells us two things. One is, uh, yes, 1.4 million vehicles were recalled. Who were, whose vehicles were there? Jeep, FCA. So Fiat Chrysler had to bear the cost of recalls. Brand image. Who lost the brand image? FCA lost the brand image. So it, 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 it is pretty clear that OEMs have to drive uh, security. Uh, security cannot be sold to end user as such. I mean, if you tell me that, look, pay 100 rupees more and uh, pay 100,000 more and you will get the most secure car, I'll rather be not so interested because I don't know the uh, repercussions. But the OEM is aware of this. And all that the OEM can do is he can pass on the cost to the telematics, uh, well, to the tier ones. So in our view, uh, <laughs> security is only as strong as the weakest link. And uh, telematics units for this forum, precisely, I would want to make a note that they are the entry point into the vehicle e, &E. So we cannot not secure telematics units. Thank you. Thank you, Kushwan. Uh, I must thank Dr. Binhas, uh, Sakshi, Kushwan, very insightful talks. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, with this, I think I would like to close this panel. Thank you, everybody.